I think. Uh, because it's so new, it's okay to scratch the surface and dive deeper. Part of being in this world, which makes it really fun for me, is that it's, it's a journey. We're in, at the cutting edge of something new happening. We don't have it all figured out yet. We're learning as we go in a lot of ways. And we're seeing engagement beyond anything that we would see with, with conventional video. Uh, and that's what makes it fun. And in other times, it doesn't work, and we're learning. So if you're seeing something or you have a question, stop me. It's totally fine to do that, especially with this stuff. You know, because, so uh, I always like having my kids in my, video, in my presentations. And so this is my son. My son recently got into magic. And I think it's really cool because it's super old school. His head's not buried in a device the whole time. And he's actually doing street magic. He's 10. Right? So I go out with him, and he does street magic, and he shows people stuff. And the reason I want to show this is because in a lot of ways, this is like magic right now. People really don't understand it. They don't understand how it works. They don't understand how to use it. They don't understand the whole concept. They just know it's cool, and right now it's kind of buzzy. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to try to demystify it. I'm going to explain to you how it all works. Um, and this is what I like to do generally, is I don't know who's in the audience. For all I know, we have people who are also doing virtual reality, and they're just looking for new ideas, right? So I want to make sure that everybody gets something out of this. I'm going to start at the base, and then I'm going to work my way up. And anywhere along the way, just stop and ask. Because just like with him, there is a, there's a tell, and there's a high five, and there's a, there's a moment of glory, hopefully by the end of this. So I think the first thing that we need to find out here is, what is the difference Anybody, what is the difference between virtual reality and augmented reality? Correct. Yes. And for that, you get a mug. Yes. Exactly. Well done. Well done. Yes. That's the big thing, is you're being immersed in a completely different world. That's virtual reality. It's a separate world. It is a virtual world. Augmented reality is an augmented world. So think about Pokemon Go, right? The world still existed, but oh my gosh, there's a Pokemon there. Oh, get away from me, Pikachu. You know, like it's that sort of thing, right? That's the difference. Okay. So the next question that I think is important for you guys to think about is you hear virtual reality and 360 video. Anybody know the difference between this or the same or what is, what is it? So I can see what you're saying. I can see what you're saying. I want to add to that a little bit. Anybody else? Here's the way I would say it 360 video is the umbrella term, it is all video that you can see 360 degrees around, right? Virtual reality is a portion of 360 video where you are fully immersed. You put on the headset, it's, three, it's, it's, it's 3D, 3D, if I could talk, it's three dimensional, and you are physically there. There's depth, you feel like you can touch things, right? There might even be spatial audio, which means that like, there's a sound that comes from over there and you feel like you gotta turn your head and see it. Like, it's super immersive. So that's the big difference between those, okay? We're gonna talk a little bit about virtual reality, we're gonna talk all of this is going to be about 360 video. So understand that that's the way it works. And what's important to remember is to see 360 video, you can do that just right on your phone right now. Okay? You can literally just look and turn around. I can show this to you afterwards. And on your browser, I will play some 360 videos for you that I'll be able to manipulate right on Google Chrome. We'll be able to look up, down, look around. Right? You can do that right now. You don't need anything else. You don't need a headset. Now, if you wanted it to be really immersive, yeah, put a headset on. Like, there's a video we have here that uh, it's a, you're feeding a giraffe. And, like, I don't know if you've ever been around a giraffe, but they got these really long tongues. And so, like, the tongue comes out, and you feel like you're going to, you duck because the tongue comes out, right? That's what happens when you put on the headset and you have the fully immersive experience. All right. Just talking briefly about like VR growth. Right now, I mentioned we are really at the base of this. Right? It's, it's, just, it's just starting. Uh, when we started diving into VR, I was not looking at this as something that was going to be lucrative for my business right now. Um, I think that what's going to happen over the next year, because it's trending and buzzing, and right now it, it probably is the most trending term, in certainly in video marketing, if not digital at large. And it's going to continue to trend. The problem right now is that people aren't exactly sure how to use it. People exa aren't exactly sure how to get their ROI out of it. And truth be told is, it's expensive. It's, it's not cheap. So brands are a little bit hesitant, especially like smaller, mid-sized brands, right? But what you're going to see is you're going to see growth. And this is just one particular graph that I found. Uh, but most of them trend in this general direction. By 2020, we're talking about like a $40, $50 billion industry, right? So, I, and I would not have spent as much time learning and understanding it if I didn't think this is really where everything is headed. So just wanted to kind of give that a basic, basic plan. So I want to give you a demo. 
Because the first thing you have to understand is what the heck is it? This right here is the Nokia Ozo. It's um, a fully functional virtual reality camera. It has eight lenses. Okay, they call them sensors. Each one of these lenses or sensors shoots 195 degrees, right? So 180, 360 is a full circle, 195 is this. What happens is, in post-production, the software will stitch, think about like your grandma stitching a, like a, a quilt or something. It will stitch those overlapping sensors together to create one full holistic image that if it were to be printed, you could literally wrap it around a basketball and that's what it looks like. So what I'm gonna do right now is, I'm gonna turn this thing on, I'm gonna show you what we look like right now from that sensor to give you an idea. So, this right here, and I'm gonna start capturing it. This right here, are, I have four of the eight sensors active right now. Uh, the reason I'm doing it this way is because you actually get a better higher resolution. Um, not to get too technical, but just for the purpose of this conversation, you get a higher resolution because you have a limited amount of data that can go into the machine. And so, by having four, I get more data for each sensor. So I, I like using four, because it's, it's a higher rate. And it's doing something like, I think it's 1.2 gigabits a second. It's something like absurd amount of data that it's bringing in. Files that we're putting out of this are like 250 gigs a minute, right? So, like, it's a very, very, very big files that come out of this. So right here, you're seeing how these four different sensors look. You can't really see it from probably where you are. But what if I did this, it'll put it together as one image. And right now, it's streaming live, but because it's not connected physically, it, what it does is it'll update every five seconds. So you'll see, I was there, and in about two seconds, I'll be here suddenly. And you'll see how it moves, right? But that image right there that you're looking at is literally the whole room. That side connects to that side, the bottom connects to the top, and it wraps around. Cool? Okay, what ends up happening with the way in which it plays back, it has, you have to play back through a very specific playback, a player, that allows you not to see the whole thing, to only see one little slice of it. And that slice shouldn't be so bent, like the term we use in video is fisheye, because if you look into like a fisheye, like a fishbowl, it'll bend everything because of the water and the glass, right? You don't want it to be too bent because then it starts not looking real. So you have to use a specific player for that. Um, I'll go over the platforms that you can use online for it, but what I use to just play things off of my machine for the purpose of this conversation, it's a GoPro VR player. It's free, you download it, you use it. I'll be using it in a minute. Um, this right here is a virtual reality camera. So I can shoot this stereoscopically, meaning that I can actually shoot it three dimensions. So you'll feel like you're there. This is a little um, 360 action camera by Nikon. It has two lenses, one in the front, one in the back. It take that stitching that I was telling you about, it does it all inside the camera for you, and it works like a GoPro. Now, the image quality is nowhere near that. Um, the versatility, though, is really cool. Like, we dropped this into an aquarium because it's also waterproof, right? And we gave people a sense of, like, what do the fish see? So the sharks are swimming around and stuff like that, and you can be with the sharks, right? And you can still use this. Again, 360, not VR, but still cool. Different uses and certainly much more portable. I mean, I went hiking with this, I've done things on my family trips with this. Not so much with that, difference in cost too. Uh, 500 bucks, when that first came out it was 60,000, six zero. Yeah, so, so that's why when we're talking about the cost structure, it is expensive, the gear is expensive, and also understanding how to use the technology is also a little bit expensive. It, it took us time, and we're still learning. I'm, anybody who tells you differently, uh, they're trying to pull one over on you because the way people are using it is very different. It changes all the time. So next question I have is, and it really goes into the idea of, of storytelling in virtual reality or 360. What is the difference between storytelling with a regular camera that you know, we would shoot off the shoulder that you might see in a news, you know, news conference or something, or that? Any ideas? Definitely more immersive. But from a storytelling standpoint, what do you think you have to think about it's different. Yeah, I like that. You know what? You get a, you get a cup for that. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you, you definitely need to think more full. You have to think more completely. Um, and the part that I like to think about that, uh, I don't know, this is one of the few things that, like, I think this is very, very profound. So I'm sorry if it's not. But I think it's really profound. <laughs> but 
when you're, when you're shooting regular video, I am taking you, as a storyteller, I am taking you along on this journey. I am saying, hey, I want these words to go with this image. And now we're gonna do a slow push on this because there's an emotional component to seeing this person's face. And now I, sh I am taking you on a journey directly and you're a passenger. You're passively going on the journey I bring you on. With virtual reality or 360 video, I am handing you the keys. You are in control. It's a huge difference. I think it's enormous. It sounds so small, but when you think about it from a storytelling standpoint, it's enormous because how do you, you still, as the content creator, as the brand manager, you still have certain things inside of your story that you want to make sure that connect with your audience. You know, there needs to be an ROI. So how do you make sure that happens if you don't have control? You embed control within the story. That's where storytelling is different. And I'll show you a couple examples of how we've done that. Um, and and uh, I won't get ahead of myself. So this is a project we did. Uh, I'm going to focus. I think it's just easier rather than jumping around between a lot of different projects. I'm going to focus on one project but a lot of different videos. So we did a project with a convention and visitors bureau in, in Tampa, in Tampa Bay. We picked four locations. There was uh, a science museum, there was bush gardens, there was a zoo, and there was an aquarium. And the idea is, how do we take those different locations and tell stories using 360 video and VR? Uh, and, and the first thing that came up was, we want to go inside. This is inside of this uh, science museum. So we wanted to show them the entry area, because it was just kind of cool. A lot of things are happening. And so the first thought we had was, OK, we're going to put this camera on a dolly, and we're going to roll it down. And that way, it's literally like you're walking, right? But what's the problem? You can be seen. So I've got my cameraman going doop a doop a doo behind the dolly, and, not, and then you can see the, the ugly dolly, and then you can see, like, and we're like, no, 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 it's not going to work. Can't do this, right? So it changes how stories are told. You have to think it through differently. So I'll tell you our solution to this. The first thing we did was we, <laughs> It's, it's, it's not high-tech, by the way. Not a high-tech solution. There are high-tech solutions, but we did not choose them because they're very expensive, right? So what we did was we took fishing line, and we, took it to the, we t attached it to the front of the dolly. And then my videographer went like 100 feet away, went around a corner, and, and took the fishing line and wrapped it around some pole. And then like very gently, he tugged, right? And it rolled. And, it, and we tested it, obviously. And it rolls, and it rolls very smoothly. And he's not there, right? But then, what do you see? You see this stupid fishing line on the ground, right? And because you can see everything, you know, one of the old rules of, of any sort of storytelling, especially with video, is you don't want to distract. You don't want to distract somebody from the whole concept of what you're trying to do, right? And sure, it doesn't really take away from the whole impact, but it's distracting. So we're like, oh, well, anybody who's done anything within film or anything, there's a, it's called a wire removal tool. When, when you know, in old school films, these days a lot of it's CG, but you'll see people like flying around and stuff. Well, they had wires attached to them. And then in post-production, they would remove the wires. So we're like, oh, you know what? We can probably use the wire removal tool, remove that, and no one will see it. And we did. And then the next thing was, huh, what are we going to do about this horribly ugly dolly? It's terrible. And I was like, I got it. Why don't we take the logo of the client, slap it over the dolly, and that way if anybody looks down, it's a nice reminder of what, who this video is brought by, and yet it's not really all that distracting. Final point, there's so many things happening in the room, you can't really zoom in. The technology is not, right, not there right now. Um, I mean, it is, but it isn't. In most, in most VR applications, it's not there right now where you could stand there and go, I want to be there. Right? And then suddenly, you're catapulted there. In most VR applications, you're not able to change where you physically are. You have to go along the journey that's made for you. So you can see by this room, it's a big room. How can you tell people what's what? It's too much going on, right? So we had to figure out some way of giving some sort of context. And as you can see, what we did was we decided to put arrows. Um, did we have to use arrows? No. We could have used the spatial audio concept that I mentioned to you guys before, where you put headphones on, and you know maybe there's a sound. And it might even be, look to your right, right? Anyway, whatever it is, or a sound effect to, to get their attention, like people having fun laughing, and it's behind you, and then they all turn around and check it out. But, but in this case, we weren't, we weren't so convinced that they were going to be using headphones for it, so we didn't want to use audio as the driver. 
That's why we did this. And there's other tools to use to do this. Um, but the idea is you have to guide them. I like to say you're putting breadcrumbs down, right? Because again, they're in control of what they see, but if you give them a good guide, a way to follow it, they'll probably follow the path because they imagine that you're showing them the good stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play for you the video that we ended up doing here, just so you can see the way it worked out. All right. And here it is. Now, I can turn it. See, there's, 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 there's the client, right? Do you see? Ah, we got rid of that, that wire. Construction project. Now you see this going on over here. It lets people know. You go back to forward. Oh, what's up, up here? Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, they're meeting a robot. That seems like fun. What a pretty building. See what I'm saying? Like, it gives people, and I'm moving this around right now. And we purposefully didn't use a lot of music for this. We wanted people to just enjoy it for what it was. In other videos, we've used music to drive things. Um, one thing you shouldn't do is you can't do a lot of cuts. Like in regular video, there might be like a cut every second, three seconds. You can't do a lot of cuts because suddenly, think about it, back to what you had said earlier, if you're actually being transported into a different environment, to a different world, right? So suddenly you think you're in that world, and then the next thing you know, you get transported to a different world. You're like, where the heck am I? You know, like, you can't do that to people. You have to give them a chance to actually settle into the environment and get used to it. All right. And I'll show you some more stuff, too. But first, I just want to talk a little bit about how you use it. We've, we're using one example in the hospitality industry. So what I'm, gonna, what I'm listing here is I'm not listing industry-specific. I'm listing concepts. We can talk industry-specific if you guys want to in the Q&A section. You know, I mean, I, I know that it's very applicable in, in healthcare right now. Um, we're working right now with a hospital to try to do something really cool where, uh, let's say you're, you're training people about how to handle things in an emergency room, right? What more effective way to do it would be than to show them what the experience would literally be like, record it, and then as part of their training, they would experience it as if they were really there, but they didn't have to be there. And so that way we could control it, right? So we were, we're creating content like that for them. And there's a ton of different uses, but what I wanna do is I wanna list just general video concepts where VR can come into play. And feel free to like ask questions about any of these, because you know, when you're thinking about how to use it, a tour is a very obvious way. You wanna give somebody an experience. You tour it, right? You wanna welcome somebody to your company. We're talking to one of our clients, they're a tech company. Right? How cool would it be if you're onboard, you're being onboarded as a new employee to this super high-tech company? And as part of your whole onboarding experience, here's some Oculus, you know, headsets, and boom, meet your CEO, and their CEO is about to take you on a tour for the company. Like, how cool would that be in, in terms of an impression? Right? So these are some of the ways of doing things. You know, what is your culture like? You can really give them a sense of what the culture is like because they can feel like they're there. Uh, but then there's also marketing applications. So, I mean, I listed a whole bunch of this. I'm happy to share this with you guys later on. Just email me um, if you want to. But these are just some thoughts about how you can use uh, this technology for business. The bottom line, though, is it's all about creating that experience. And like you mentioned before, it's not any experience. It's an immersive experience. That's the big difference. You are physically in an environment. And yes, that was a clip taken from, from the outside of the fish tank. And I don't know if you can see it, but right over there is that camera that we, we basically strapped down on the bottom. So again, different approaches. You would never do that if it weren't for that type of camera. You just don't want anything in the way, right? So you just want to have it be. And if you want to, I can show you the actual video later on. Um, in fact, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just show you a couple of other videos to show you. One of them, we were, I believe we're the first people to strap this camera to a roller coaster. And what I like about this video is not only that, um, the lighting is really cool, it's super crisp. From a, and this is where from a tech standpoint I get really geeked out because the amount of motion that's around, think about how, how hard that would be to process all that motion, all in real time, and it does it seamlessly. So I'll play the video right now. Um, there's a VR platform called Veer VR. I'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute. They launched recently, they're based in Hong Kong. They are testing um, this video right now, right this moment, actually. Well, in a half hour, I should say. It, it, it's going to go pushed out. But they're already up to 24,000 views. We're trying to hit 50,000 views. The beginning of the campaign started three days ago. So again, I'm, I'm stepping ahead a little bit because, I don't know, I'm just kind of excited about it. But 
But like this, this video right now is being used elsewhere. And I'll just, I'll play the video for you just so you can see what it feels like. And again, what I'm playing for you right now is not the stereoscopic. You don't have a headset on. You're just going to experience it in, in virtual, in uh, 360. Okay. Can we make it a little bit louder? Is that possible? All right. This is one of my favorites. You can watch them react. But like, I don't know about you, but I mean, I'm getting a sense of motion here, right? Oh, and this is my absolute favorite part. I gotta get it. Oh, I gotta get it. Here we go. Watch this. Here it comes. <laughs> so it's about an immersive experience, right? It's about an immersive experience. It's, it is unlike anything else that's out there. You feel like you're there. And, and this is something I'm going to mention again later, but I want to say it now, you know, just to emphasize this. A lot of the brands are actually asking this question. They're like, well, you know, if they experience this in virtual reality, are they going to want to actually experience it in reality? Right? Every single study that was done on this, every single study is that it, it draws people to want to experience it in reality. That it gives them, an, and, and this video is in particular, I've shown it to people who hate roller coasters, and after experiencing this video, they actually want to ride the ride now. And that was unsolicited. Like, I've, I've, I've tested this on my own. So I do think that's a really interesting part about how we are all wired. We're experiencing something virtually, and now let's see if we can actually experience it. Um, and I'll also show you just one more. I'll show you very briefly the, uh, the giraffe video. And I will say, the giraffe video is much better stereoscopically, um, because you really do feel like you're feeding the giraffe. But, so there's a giraffe. And you can see that image that I showed you before. This is again, right? And you can look over here at the people, and you can see behind the scenes how people are getting lettuce and like all this stuff. You can look wherever you want to look. Because really, in this case, I don't care where you look. As the content creator, as the storyteller, I just want you to feel like you're here. I want you to feel like you're experiencing it. And as a result of it, I want you to want to be this woman. I want you to want to come with your kid. I want you to want to have that experience. And I want you to want to feel what it's like to have that giant tongue flickering over your head. Which, you know, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit because I think it's right about there. There we go. <laughs> right? It's an immersive experience and it's memorable. You know, these are the things that we talk about as storytellers is to create something that's memorable. It's very hard to do. Um, it is. It's very hard to do. But with this sort of technology, I think it definitely helps. It helps tell the story. So uh, now let's get into a little bit of the marketing of, of VR. Um, I, I showed this earlier as well, this one GIF. Um, but I, I, I love GIFs in general. The reason I want to show this again is because this is a new technology. I don't know how many people in the room have ever seen 360 video before, right? You guys are probably the exceptions. There's probably a much higher percentage of you guys who actually have experienced it and played with it and whatnot. But the general public have not. And they don't really understand it. So how do you get them to actually grasp something? Well, you've got to show them stuff that they do understand, that they already have their head wrapped around. And so you give them things like animated GIFs that, that basically, you know, roller coaster in 360 degrees. So you click to see the full video. You give them and you share that with them in places that they're accustomed to see it. You're opening the door, making them go, huh, I've heard about this 360 thing. What's that? Click. Right? You want to give them the entree. You're, you're telling stories even along those lines. Like with this campaign, not only do we do a bunch of these GIFs like this, some of them with call to action, some of them not. We also did behind the scenes stuff where, uh, you know, little moments of things that happened, like this one point, uh, we were at the zoo and we had walked away from the camera uh, and we came back 
and this bird attacked our lens, not this lens, but uh, right, and shattered the lens by pecking and stuff, right? I wish we were rolling on it. I mean, I mean, the camera was just sitting there. But like, it was a funny little behind the scenes moment. Like, and like, you know, I scolded the bird, you know, but it's a funny little behind the scenes moment that you can use very socially, but the end goal is to get people to experience 360 and, and, and try it. Uh, then what we also did, we put together a whole bunch of behind the scenes footage to create a one minute, like behind the scenes sizzle reel which I'll play that for you now. the lens. Did you see the little shot at the lens at the end? We had to get it in there. No one knows what it was, but it made us laugh. So again, people see that. You don't know anything about VR. You're like, wow, what is this? And all you have to do is click, because it's all set up right there. So I think that's a really big component to this. You're, you're teaching people. You're educating people about it in a way while you're entertaining them. And I think it's very important to think about it that way. You know, if I just said, now I'm going to teach you about VR, right? Most people are going to be like, yeah, 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 I'm busy. But if you entertain them, you give them something, and then all you have to do is click then they're going to try it. So here are some uh, VR video platforms. And there are a lot of other platforms that allow you to use VR. Like Wistia, you can upload to. You can upload to Vimeo and Brightcove like, and Limelight. All these other platforms that are video hosting platforms do. I didn't list those because these platforms, and where I think it's important, this is where video is being shared. You can go to Veer VR right now, and I mean, I can. I might even be able to have it up. Let me just see if I have it up. I might. Yeah. So this is Veer VR right now. Let me just refresh this. This is, oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh, you know, the reason why is because the computer is hooked up to the, uh, to the camera. But anyway, last I checked, it was about 25,000 views. But people come to Veer VR to, to view VR content. People go to um, Little Star to view VR content. People go to Facebook to view VR content. Same thing, or 360 content. Same thing with YouTube. So this is part of the strategy. You're going to use these platforms for people to explore. And you'll tag them, and you'll share within these platforms. Of course, you've got to talk about results a little bit. Um, the Visit Tampa Bay project that I was just telling you about, within the first month of launch, this is where we were at. <laughs> So it's uh, 45,430 minutes of viewing. And notice, I did not put views. It's like, for those who didn't hear me earlier, I, I really don't like views. I think it's, it's, a, it's a vanity metric. I, I think it, it's really empty. It doesn't really show as much. It doesn't show that you've actually accomplished anything. It's just something that people can write down to make them feel like they've accomplished something. But it might not have accomplished anything. Right? And I don't like doing that. I, I really I feel dirty when I see people do that, because it really does mess up the industry. So. Anyway, 40, that's, that's something different. Like, you know you had engaged eyeballs for literally 45,000 minutes, right? It's good. So with that, if that actually, yeah, that's the same question I, I told you about earlier. How does it translate into the real world? And we already talked about that, the idea that it, it does. It, it does not take away from real reality. And so I think we probably have about five minutes left. I want to make sure that I, I open up plenty of questions. If you don't get your question answered here, please feel free to reach out to me. And yes, that's an artistic picture of my daughter sleeping. And I don't think it has anything to do with VR. I just thought it was really funky. <laughs> Perfect. So we have time for questions, about five or so minutes. So yeah, here, I'm just going to record the audio. Hi, Glenn. Thank you for that presentation. Um, 
So from your perspective, what's going to keep this from really going, you know, critical mass, right? What, 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 is, what is the point where this is going to tip and it's going to be commonplace as mobile? Right? So I think it is right now. That's the place, when we're producing content, I'll, I don't want to skirt your question because it's a very good question, but I do need to give you this, this background to it. Right now, the, the majority of people are watching it on their mobile devices. Right? Most people don't do what I did, which was on a, on a Chrome or on a browser look. That's not how people are consuming 360 for the most part. So right now, that's the area of growth. Um, and I think really where things are changing, one, it has to do with people's understanding of it. I think also we need more use cases for it to grow. I think that uh, speeds will improve. Like right now, we're still dealing with, remember the old days of buffering? Because of the size of these files and stuff, if I pull my phone out right now and I tried to play for this for you off of my cellular connection, it's still not 4K. It doesn't, it won't, unless I get a really, really good signal, cell signal, or if I'm on a really good Wi-Fi, it's still too much. It's pulling too much. And so it takes away from the experience. Um, there's also lack of consistency. And what I mean by that is, uh, I'm going to go a little old school for those of you guys who remember this, but the whole debate in the 70s of like, beta versus VHS, right, who's going to win? Like, in a way, that's what we're dealing with right now, because there's so many different players in the space, we don't know really where we're going. And um, that has to do with the way VR is actually viewed. Um, and, and not to overwhelm the question with a bunch of different answers, but another big problem right now is Apple. Apple's really, I mean, I used to love Apple, and I am so mad at them. You know, they're so far behind. They, they actually... Um, up until the most recent um, Mac Pro that just came out, they didn't have a machine that could actually play it. Oculus and, and HTC, all the creators of like the really big, they don't allow their stuff to be played on, a Mac, uh, on an Apple operating system because the viewing experience is bad because the graphics card in the machines wasn't powerful enough. It was like four or five year old technology. And so, you know, obviously, if you have a bad experience, right, you're not going to blame Apple. Apple's great. You're going to blame, oh, this junky Oculus. It won't do anything, right? And they're like, no, we're not going to let you guys ruin our brand. So they didn't let them do it. So I think that's a big thing. You know, I'm really excited about the, uh, the iPhone X or 10 or whatever you want to call it. That might really open up some new, some new things because looking at, at true virtual reality inside the Apple world is very challenging, right? So a lot of answers, but it was a great question. Well, they're bringing VR into it. It's all coming together as one. The problem is, like, it has to do with the way the operating system, and this is a little techy geeky, but it has to do with the way the operating system is also built. Have you ever noticed that on, if you used an Android, if you click a video, it'll just play, right? Where with Apple, you actually have to click it, and then something happens inside of the phone. It actually opens the, the video in, inside of a, a video player, and that doesn't happen in the Android world. It all happens kind of seamlessly, right? It's that sort of stuff. Like, for this to work right, it has to be a seamless experience. And I think that's what they're worried about. And the challenge has always been that they're, they're closed source versus Android and everybody else being open source. So, got a little bit geeky with your answer, but it's a great question. Anybody else? Yeah, we got time for one more question. So, what editing software are you using to place, like, text into these 360 videos? Great, um, great. Is that Premiere? So, um, yes, it's Premiere. So we use Premiere. Uh, Premiere has actually opened up their, their capabilities to allow for VR editing. What we do is we stitch. I mentioned the whole grandma's quilt thing, right? We stitch on separate software. Um, the software we stitch on comes from Nokia. There's uh, an, an other, there are plenty of other stitching softwares. Um, one of the more popular one is called Color. It's actually owned by GoPro. For the geeks out there as well, it used to be called Autopana. Um, and there's a lot of stitching softwares out there. But once you stitch and you get everything together, you can export it as a, a, an image that kind of looked like what I was showing you before that was coming out of this camera. And then with that, inside of Premiere, you can put the, that stuff in. What we also do, do is, um, and this is again more tech geek stuff, but we'll bring it into um, DaVinci Resolve. And for those of you who don't know, DaVinci Resolve is a, it's, for the most part, it's a color grading software. It allows you to like change people's eye colors. It allows you to you know, create cinematic. You can paint, basically, on the screen. So Resolve works really, really well because it allows us to have much more manipulation of different layers of what you're seeing visually on a screen. Um, but it's very, like when you think about it, as it is right now, there's a lot of steps. You know? 
you export the video, that's something like four hours a minute, right, at high res, right? Then you import it into this other stuff, three, four other steps, like it's, it's heavy lifting, and that goes back to the whole idea of expense. And I think once the expense also comes down, and you're gonna see much more content out there. Um, so, does that answer your question? Anybody else? All right, let's hear it for Glenn. Thank you so much. <laughs>